very blessed and honored to have a county chair here in Angelina County, um, Bob Florida. Coming from living in Harris County, a Republican in Harris County, you know what it means to have a strong county chair, what that means to have a strong county chair leadership. And I know what that means. And I've come to respect Bob's leadership. The, re the reason for this right here is not because of James White. It's because Bob Flournoy dragged me down the office two, three times over the last two weeks, sat down with a yellow, the yellow, yellow tablet and said, okay, this is what we have to do. This is what we're going to do. I want this to be like this. I want this to be like this. Well, I'm going to tell you what I did. I got out of the way. <laughs> and I went and campaigned, and he took over this thing, and this is why it's like it is today. And Bob, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your friendship. I want to thank you for your guidance. My county chair, Mike Patty, not only a good friend and a good chair, he is a fellow colleague in education. And I want to thank him. I remember about this time, I dropped this on him up at the Texas Star Cafe. Someone else likes that restaurant. <laughs> at the Texas Star Cafe. And uh, Mike said, well, you know, redistricting's coming up. And, yeah, we're going to have to do something. But, you know, uh, Jim McReynolds is, is pretty tough. Let me tell you about that. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time today talking about Jim McReynolds. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about where he stands, where he lives. Because I think Texas, East Texans are more concerned about keeping their own house versus where uh, Mac Reynolds is living. Right. But with that said, I was sitting in a, in a meeting while I was listening to him speak in a meeting. This is what he said, Wayne. He said, uh, redistricting is not about R's and D's. Your R's should stand for rural and your D's should stand for dirt. And uh, that's kind of like his, 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 um, his comeback on that. And uh, I kind of agree with him on that to a certain extent. But I think your R should stand for runaway and your D should stand for disappearing off the home. Okay? I think that too. So uh, we can keep that in mind. Politics is serious business. And I came in this race uh, not expecting anything, not expecting any sure outcome. But, I, but back in October, when it looked like Obama was going to run the table, in the back of my mind, I had the idea that the American people in East Texans especially aren't stupid. And Bob took two of my speech lines. I was going to do one on two visions and one on the independence. You came up and did both of them in one speech. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But Bob is right. What is the spirit that you, you see here in East Texas? And is the same spirit that we had about 234 years ago in 1776. Much as times have changed, the, the grievances haven't changed any. Situation really hasn't changed any. Then as now we have a national government that's engaged in big spending, profligate spending. It wants to relegate our children to Future, our future generations to a financial bondage as Americans did over two centuries ago they had a series of taxes Sugar, Sugar Act, Stamp Act, Revenue Act, T Act and it was an attempt to punish the most productive Americans and when we look at it today government has a string of taxes income tax, gross margins tax, sin taxes, sales tax excise tax, health care tax. And it seems like it's only one reason to do all that. <clears throat> Government seems to have this thirst for the people's wealth in order to buy the vote. You already own the, the people are already the government and then the government comes and tries to get you to sell yourself out. And then we look at property rights. Leading into 1776 they had this thing called the Quartering Act where the government could take over your house and house soldiers. We see today that we have a government that has a contempt for property rights with such schemes as the Texas Trans Court, perversions to the power of intimate domain, the excessive valuations by appraisal districts. So 
as then in 1776, where Americans were swearing their allegiance to a government. You know, we had Americans then on the frontier regions, the border states, the border colonies, and they were neglected. Today, we have a national government that not only neglects its sovereign duty to secure its international borders, but it joins with foreign governments to sue its citizens for doing what it arrogantly refuses to do. The Coercive Acts of 1774 were just a bunch of regulations. It was like the EPA and the OSHA then. Just a bunch of regulations to harass the people, trample over their constitutional rights, strangle the entrepreneurial spirit. And during that colonial era, Americans faced a threat to their ultimate means to confront tyranny when the British soldiers marched to Concord and Lexington to get the guns. A lot of people were happy the other week when the Supreme Court ruled that Chicago's uh, gun control law was uh, unconstitutional. Everybody was happy. I wasn't too happy. Five to four? Yeah, right. Five to four? You mean one boat? And I teach high school. My kids in high school, they get it. That's right. They get the Second Amendment. It's an individual and a collective right. But some of the best legal minds in the country, five to four, I think that's a reason to get along. In the colonial period, in the colonial period we shed our allegiance to a national government in London. But here's a, a sort of different thing, and I think Bob and alluded to this, the th different thing then is you had state, well then local, colonial governments that wanted to stand between the individual rights of the people and the national government. We don't really have that now. Uh, we have a situation now where, where state governments and local governments are willing to roll over. We have a government State, national, that overpromises and underdelivers, overtaxes and overspends. And now what it uses to destroy the trample over the liberties of the people, because you have a lot of lawyers in control, is a suit. So that brings us today. And we say, well, what is the spirit that we hear out there in East Texas. And why are you here today and what you need to, you need to know what the spirit is so you can marshal it and put it to use. And I just think it's just, a, it's just real simple. Had enough. What you see out there in East Texas, people have just had enough. And that's the resounding response you have. Had enough. Americans are saying, no, we're not going to consign our children and our children's children to be slaves of financiers in Asia, in central banks. The American people are standing up, and what you need to do when you go out there is you need to stand up with them and say, you had enough. When I was thinking about this race, um, I believe I was, one night I was reading my Bible, and I was in the um, sixth or the seventh chapter of Isaiah. 